Hi, beautiful girls. Today, we're gonna to talk about a woman of strength. here. I'm so glad you joined us today. We are just on fire here at Women Rock and we are excited about what God has been teaching us. There are so many good things that God has for you and this is a show all about women. Now not what the world says about women, not what the world thinks women should be, but what God says and God says who we are and who we are in Him. Isn't that beautiful and good news? We've been covering some of the Proverbs 31 scriptures and they have been powerful. So you can go back and check out some of the other episodes, but we are going to dive in today to Proverbs 31 and I'm really excited for what God has for us today in this episode. I believe God's word wants to speak to you, so surrender your heart to what He has for you. Open yourself up and let's get into the word together. I'm so excited. We're going to dive into Proverbs 31, 17 through 18. So get your Bibles out, Proverbs 31, 17 through 18. And it says, she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. Verse 18, she perceives that her merchandise is good and that her lamp does not go out by night. That is a strong woman. That is a woman who is strong and is prepared for anything. The Proverbs 31 woman can do a lot, but did you know that she is strong and that she's prepared for anything? Now we look at this woman in the Bible and we think, oh, that's Proverbs 31 girl, that's not me. You don't know how scared I am when I start to enter into life and things start coming at me or I don't feel very strong. I feel like I'm weak. I'm crying all the time and I'm frustrated and, and I can't seem to overcome these things. But I'm here to tell you today that we're going to dive into the word and we're going to find out what God says about us. And remember, the Proverbs 31 woman is you. We just have to remind ourselves this. And I love in this verse how it says that she girds herself. That means she puts on. I didn't just show up here without any clothes. That would be horrible. But I had to put on a dress. I had to put on my makeup. I had to try and do my hair the best I could so that I could be ready for the moment that I was about to step into. You see, the Proverbs 31 woman, she puts on strength. But she knows that it's not her own strength, but it's a strength that comes through Jesus Christ. And she considers her merchandise and that it's good. And she gets to work and she does it. So see... I believe God is talking to us girls, and sometimes we have a really hard time in life taking care of ourselves. You go, oh no, here she goes, she's gonna talk about you time. Actually, I am. Because I believe that we as women, we take care of everyone else in our world, but we don't take care of ourselves so much so that we end up breaking down, we have these mental capacity extremes, everybody calls us emotional and they don't get us, but what happens is you've poured out so much in so many different people's lives that you yourself, you're incredibly drained and you're not strong anymore and you find yourself in a weak place and so, I believe that this woman understands that she needs to fill herself up with the strength of Christ, that she has to take care of herself. What does this look like for you? Maybe this means that you've got to maybe ask the Holy Spirit and bring him into your day and say, I'm not doing well, but I want to be strong. And the Holy Spirit's going to begin to speak to you. I know for myself in my life, there were many times that I pour out. I'm a pastor, I'm a mom, I'm a friend, I'm an auntie, I'm everything. And I understand pouring out so much that you feel empty. And so there was a season in my life where I literally had to go and get myself a Christian health coach, where I had to talk to her weekly and she had to help me learn how to eat healthy again because what I was putting in my body was actually making me feel weird because I wasn't eating healthy. I had to start exercising and you know for me that started really small. It was like a two minute run in place while I was watching TV and then in the middle of doing stuff for the kids, which then turned into five minutes and then 10 minutes. And then now I'm part of an exercise program is something that I do to keep myself going because I realize once I actually take care of my physical being, my spirit man is stronger, my emotional state is better, and I am able to gird myself with the strength of Christ and take on my day a much better in a much better place. And so are you taking care of yourself? Because that's really important and you do matter. And maybe nobody else around you is gonna stop and take care of you, but you have to stop and take care of you. Maybe you need to have some you time. What does you time look like? Maybe it's reading a good book. Maybe it's taking a trip to the beach by yourself. Maybe it's, I don't know, taking a hike outside or going and helping someone in need, but not because you're pouring out, but because you're actually, that gives you energy to love people and take care of them. You see, 
So many times I've had to find those positions for myself and I've had to like put myself away from my family, put myself away from, from the church, put myself away from the responsibilities that are coming at me and just be with God. And sometimes being with God for me is just sitting silently or reading a good fictional book. Or for me, I like foreign films because then I have to read them and I can't think about anything. So there is that self-care. But then this woman puts on strength. And not only do I keep myself in that position, but I've got to strengthen my inner man. So that's our physical need. But what about your spiritual side? You've got to strengthen up your innermost being. That means you've got to ask the Holy Spirit to come and be a part of your day. And then you've got to be honest with him. There's so many times when I say, I really failed at that. Holy Spirit, I didn't respond well. I didn't react well in that conversation. I didn't do this well. But she perceives where she's at in life. She evaluates her attitude. She evaluates her level of maybe irritability. She understands that maybe she could be better at something. And so that's when we as women need to stop. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit, can you help me? Can you help me love my family like I need to? Can you help me love the people at work like I need to because I'm not feeling it. Maybe the student in school, maybe that girlfriend who you're having a hard time with. I don't know, but you can ask God to come into that atmosphere and into your innermost spirit man and speak to the Holy Spirit about this. It says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Sometimes you might just need to ask God for some strength. There's so many times I feel very tired or weak, and I've just said, oh, Holy Spirit, I need you today. I need your strength because my strength is not going to get me through this day. And when I do that, when I submit myself to what God wants, something supernatural happens, and the day turns into what God needs it to be. And you are a Proverbs 31 woman. You can do this. You might be in a time and, and season in life where you're grieving. Maybe you've lost a loved one, and so you feel so weak. You feel defeated. Maybe you have lost a job or you're working through marital issues and so you physically are emotionally drained. I understand that position as well. Those deepest darkest places where only God can come and speak to your heart. Those are the best moments to be in and that's those are the moments where you find strength in who God is and not who you are. Those are the beautiful moments that God comes and he rescues you from the broken places, from the unanswerable questions that no human can actually put an answer to. Those moments where you're in your darkest moment and yet the Holy Spirit can come and wrap his arms around you and say, I love you, daughter. It's going to be okay. You see, he's the husband to the ones that don't have a husband. He's the one who heals a broken heart. He's the one who knows every thought and every desire. He's the one who heals the broken places and puts back the things that seem so broken. So reach out and ask the Holy Spirit for your strength today because in him, you will be stronger. In him, you can do all things. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow him to be your best friend. What does that look like? For the Holy Spirit to be my best friend, that seems like an extreme thing. You're used to the fleshly friends and maybe that, that relationship that can only go so far. But with the Holy Spirit, you can't hide anything from him. He knows your every part. He knows your needs and your desires. He's the one who created you and who formed you. And so when you come to him with an honest heart and an honest situation and a very place of either brokenness or goodness, you can be in your best moment but still feel very empty. The Holy Spirit wants to be your all and all. I've just lived this in my life and I, it's amazing how so many things in your life get stripped and I've learned that the Holy Spirit says that I am your strength when nothing else can be. When he takes everything away so that you can focus only on him, that's what he wants. He's a God who's after you, who loves you, who wants to be your all in all, who wants to encompass you with his goodness and his glory. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the message, because I like the message sometimes, and it says, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. Let's stop for a second. That's good news. You know, in, in Ecclesiastes, it says that there's nothing new under the sun. It's good news because sometimes we think we're, we're the only ones experiencing this horrible whatever it is you're facing. But I'm here to tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. People have overcome this before, and with Christ, you can make it through this, and you can do it with strength through it and be strong on the other end of it because God's got your back in it. And so then it says, all you need to remember is that God will never let you down. Ooh, isn't that good news? It just makes me feel like, oh, praise the Lord. I could just rest in that. And then he'll never let you be pushed past your limit. God knows your limit. 
Isn't that good news? Because sometimes we don't even know our limit and we get burnout and we take things too far and we become extreme in our experiences and our perceptions, but God knows our limit. And it says he won't let us go there. He always will be there to help you come through it. That's good news for someone today. Sometimes you can feel like you're going to break. Have you ever been in that place where you're like, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. No more. I'm not letting them run over me like that again. I'm not doing this for the family. I, I'm blah, blah, blah. And we could get on our little soapboxes, girls, because I know we can. We won't tell the men we know that's called nagging. But we get to this point of a break. We're broken. We're just like, we're done. But you know, sometimes I think those moments are actually not bad if you can actually push through them. Because when you break and God puts you back together, you actually are stronger. That mold is a deeper mold and a tighter fit. You see, God wants to be the one to put you back together. God wants to have his intricate part into all the broken places of our lives because when we're put back together in Christ, nothing can break us. It makes me think about like when you lift weights. In some of my workouts, I've had to do some weightlifting. And then the next day after I've done some weightlifting, I'm like so sore, I can't even walk, or sometimes it's hard for me to lift my arms above my head. And that's because the muscle in my arm had to rip and then heal back. And when it heals back, it gets stronger and it's tougher. And the next time I lift weights, I can lift more weight. And I believe that every time you feel like you're done, you can't keep going, I want you to remember that you are actually gonna make it through that you are girding yourself with strength, the strength of Christ Jesus, and that you are gonna make it to the other side of this. And when you come out on the other side, you're gonna be stronger and you're gonna be tougher and you're gonna have the answer from heaven on what to do. I love this verse in Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. It says, he gives power to the weak, that's good news, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. That means that when you can't, he can. Good news. Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. We are seeing that in our society. But in verse 31, it says, but those who wait on the Lord. I want to stop there for a second. Waiting is not fun. Patience is a part of strength. It takes a strong woman to sometimes just have to sit and wait on what God wants to do instead of trying to make something happen. When you try and make something happen in your own ability, you're gonna fail and you're gonna get your own ability results. That means you're gonna get the fail, you're gonna get the pressure, you're gonna have money issues, and that's all because you did it before God gave you the plan, like we talked about before. But when you wait on the Lord and you renew yourself in his strength, it says this, you shall, you shall renew their strength, that they will mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Proverbs 31 woman, she girds herself with strength and she strengthens her arms. She perceives the merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. You can't be taken out by the enemy because you are a Proverbs 31 girl. You can keep going in the strength of who Christ Jesus is. So when you want to say you're done, I'm here to tell you, no, you're not. Just push through, cry it out, girlfriend. Trust in God, get into your word, get into your prayer, put on some worship music, and let's be with our maker who will renew our strength and we will run and not grow weary. And I just love you so much. I'm so excited for what God is doing in your life today. Go be a strong woman of God. Listen, for some of you, you don't even know God. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior but he loves you so much that he died on a cross just for you. But you can't come and be with him for eternity. When you die, you will either wake up in heaven or you will wake up in hell. It's up to you, it's your choice. You don't just get to heaven by thinking good thoughts or, or saying, I believe in God. Well, even Satan believed in God. You have to actually ask God to be the Lord and savior of your life and invite him in. He's a gentleman, but not just invite him in, but you have to deny your flesh Deny yourself and your desires and begin to do life God's way and the way that God has called us as Christians to live. And so today, if you want to get right with God, I'm talking to you. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and invite him in today. And if you've been wondering about, should I do this? This is your opportunity. You're not promised tomorrow, but you have today. So get right with the Lord. This is how it works. You're gonna pray a prayer, I'll, I'll pray the prayer, and you repeat it after me. It's not about the words of our mouth, but it is about the attitude of our heart because Jesus is after our heart. He loves you so much, he died on that cross and became the spotless lamb for your sins to be washed away. 
when you pray this prayer and you ask him to come, you will become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You go, well, what does that look like? Am I going to feel different? You may not feel different. You're not going to look different. My husband likes to say, you'll even smell the same. But the reality is, is that you actually are new in the inside because Jesus Christ now comes and lives and dwells within you. You need to get into a good church. You need to begin to learn how to talk to God and read your Bible, and we can help you with that. And I'll give you some information afterwards. But let's pray the prayer together. So this is how it's going to go. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you today and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me, teach me, and show me how to walk out this life. Thank you, Jesus, that today I'm leaving hell behind and I'm headed for heaven. I have a new future and I have a new hope. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So awesome, really amazing. Did you know that heaven says that when one person gets saved, that they are partying? So they're going crazy because you just entered the kingdom of God. So welcome to the family. What do you do now? Well, we have so much information for you. We don't want to leave you out there on your own. So go to www.rockchurch.com and go and find the button that says get to know God. And we'll send you some information. We'll let you know what to do next. Try and find a local church if you're not in this area and get into a good house of God that teaches the Bible in its entirety and that loves people to life. We love you and we will see you next time. Bye girls.